even sure how do I begin this but you see yesterday something really dumb happened to me I put my phone on top of the roof of the car I drove off with the phone still on the roof of the car Five, six kilometers before realizing the phone was gone so there was a frantic search the phone's missing uh, couldn't be found couldn't be located all right uh, within a realistic distance lah. so now I am actually heading to the Maxis Center in TTDI to get myself a new sim card so first thing I did of course after I got home and and, and calmed my nerves down was to call Maxis and block my line and I discovered that if you use a Samsung phone there is this feature called Samsung find my mobile that allows you to use the, the phone's GPS look signal to track its location and Android also has that function recording your whereabouts where have you been and all that so that that function was obviously switched on, on my phone and using that I am actually able to track the movements of the phone after it was dropped and believe it or not somebody picked that phone up and walked a good 40 over minutes home the locator actually managed to identify the street all right and and narrow it down to within two or three houses where the phone is anyways now I need to go and sort out the sim card first and originally today I was supposed to film my review of the Tiguan all right right now I'm drying the Tiguan 1.4 the 2 liter model is at home so now I'm heading to TTDI to first get my sim card so that I can slot it into my spare phone and well get myself connected to the world again now on the LDP it's jammed as usual it hardly feels like a lockdown if I'm to be honest see like in this kind of driving conditions the T1 1.4 here it offers a completely stress-free driving experience if you like of course this being a low displacement engine there is that slight delay in the response but once you get used to it there is more than enough muscle in this car here for your everyday use impressively precise and confidence inspiring Volkswagen they really have struck that fine balance between confidence inspiring handling that composure on on the road all right and also delivering usable day-to-day -day comfort okay so this is the Maxis Center I'm approaching it wow boy me there are so many people uh, and... Shit Wow Crap Wow crap I, I cannot man I, I, I absolutely cannot man To bring myself to that kind of Crowded space oh, That's that's. Oh, I don't have the, the appetite for that kind of That kind of uh, Kind of of people out here it hardly feels like a lockdown uh, I am not entirely confident of stepping out of the car if I'm to be honest Ooh, Mondeo <laughs> so the Tiguan is also rather maneuverable all right it doesn't even though this is the long wheelbase version it does not feel um, it does not feel any less 
nippy or nimble compared to the the previous standard wheelbase model in fact it hardly feels imposing at all to drive okay so you see as i stepped on the the brake pedal harder uh, there was a marked reduction in the vibrations as well as the, the idling rest of the car, of the engine and that shows that the transmission has disengaged All right, and I release it, it re-engaged very very seamlessly the problem with um, automated clutch based transmissions, DCTs, CVTs like the punch CVT of Proton or single clutch or automated manual gearboxes. The tricky part is always the calibration of your clutch mechatronics uh, system, all right, that controls the engaging and disengaging of the clutch packs when you are idling, when you are in stop go traffic, when you're in crawling traffic, or when you're creeping, right? These are really the trickiest parameters in transmission calibration. See, in cars with torque converter, it's very, very easy because the torque converter allows a fair degree of slip in the torque converter, whereas the clutch, it does not. When you slip, a, when you want to allow the clutch to, to creep, all right, to take off gently, you inevitably have to allow that small degree of slip between the clutch plates, and that is very, very tricky to manage, whether is it you're doing it by foot, or by computer control and a lot of car makers struggle in getting the control right I see people dining in at restaurants but very very small numbers um, well businesses have to go on right personally I don't feel comfortable dining in just yet I am now deeply deeply uncomfortable being in the proximity of strangers in a confined space if you say like, out in the open road you walk past me that's fine i can accept that but you know to stand you know in close proximity together for a prolonged period of time and especially in an unventilated space wow i i i tabole, man even pre-covid times right i'm the type of people that i lazy to kill anything on and that honestly my wife a bit too with me man, because every time when we go holiday or whatever she was spot a place and i'll be the one that that pour cold water and say hey you look at the queue you want to go ah? and that is without worrying about covid and all that you know so now with covid lagi lah i am very reluctant to queue for anything okay so i eventually got my sim card done the most stressful two hours of my life in recent, in recent memory like. I really had multiple thoughts on whether should I should I brave the crowd or not and eventually I realized that I don't have a choice I need my phone line back so that I can continue to work I cannot afford to waste a whole day not being contactable by my colleagues or by our clients just have to get the phone line sorted there was a whole line of people outside the shop basically I just stood outside I told them that you know I'm here for this 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 and I waited till the last possible minute before I even stepped into the shop right step into the shop uh, it, was, it took less than five minutes but the waiting time you know to get me to step into that shop was like a whole two hours and I mean honestly the whole COVID situation has has put an added price to our transactions let's put it this way yesterday i was talking to a friend and at the end of the day is this we can talk all we want about you know having sops la having distancing la having a hand sanitizer hang on but all these things add cost to a business because think about it as an owner of the shop on top of all your usual overheads now you have to provide all your staff with masks you have to provide sanitizer you have to have that temperature scan thing and on top of that because of social distancing requirements your capacity to serve customers is reduced so you're in a dilemma whereby the cost of your business is escalating but your capacity to take in revenue has reduced so it's a very very sticky spot for everybody and the thing is that the way I see it is all of us must acknowledge that moving forward 
there will be that added cost in our everyday dealings in our everyday transactions interactions with other people that we have to be mindful in order to carry on our business because let's put it this way you can even if you say you're double vaccinated or if you are you may be the camp that believes in uh, ivermectin I, I i do not i don't want to weigh into this debate but what i can say is this covid19 is real and fact of the matter is fact our kids cannot be vaccinated so people like me with two kids at home even though i am fully vaccinated my wife is fully vaccinated my sister-in-law my parents everybody in the household is fully vaccinated we still can't fuck around because we are still you know sharing homes with two vulnerable kids so i cannot afford to loosen up my guard one single bit and yesterday i was talking to another friend he's a, in a, a household of full adults uh just just him and his wife and um there's no no kids at home. He, both husband and wife are fully vaccinated, completed dosage. And the way he sees it is that he and his wife now they have a bit more freedom, okay, to go about. But they will still avoid meeting unvaccinated people, or or they will avoid meeting people with unvaccinated individuals in their household, like kids. Because now, it's less of a worry that you gonna, but more of a worry that you carry the virus and you pass it on to the next person who, along the way, may pass it to someone with a comorbidity, an unvaccinated individual, pop, the full of oh yeah, then how? You contributed to the person's uh, demise. Just now when I was at the shop, I observed when I was standing outside on the road, right, waiting for my turn. And there was that queue of people, so it was like a, a double line, two rows of people uh, waiting for their turns. And I actually saw some people, right, instead of giving this group of individuals a wide berth, like, you know, walk far out. And I already siam my way. Now when I'm outside, right, I'm very alert in spotting people around me. I look at when I see other people walking around me, uh, I mentally plot their t trajectory, the way they walk, and I adjust myself to give myself maximum distance with that other person. So, even though I take into account, hey, maybe this guy wants to walk away, right, so that he doesn't have to walk through the crowd, the fellow just slumber, walk in between the two rows of people. I was thinking, huh? Hey, we've been doing this for a year, eh? You still cannot grasp the concept of of keeping your distance, up. Ah. You, 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 you are trying to. Are you like trying to invite COVID into your body or something like that? The the mindset that I have right now is no doubts about it. We can't lock down forever. We have to keep. We have to get our lives going, but. We have to adapt to a new norm. We have to adapt to a new way of conduct, of doing things, of interacting with people, of carrying ourselves out there. Another round of phone shopping. I, I'm not much of a phone guy, right? So shopping for phones is not even half or quarter as exciting as shopping for a car. If I had not gotten into YouTube, right, I would have been very happy to settle for a sub 1000 ringgit phone and that's it done. Now I pay more for my phones is because the phone is a critical tool for me to record my videos and take pictures and all that. I am nowhere near as a sharp in evaluating the specs of a phone versus that of a car. If it's shopping for a car, right, I look at the spec sheet. 150 horsepower, 250 Nm meters of torque, 7 speed DSG, bam! Immediately in my mind, I can sort of like visualize and process what am I getting out of this. I see keyless entry, I see digital instrument cluster. I know, oh, okay, these are the things. These, what are the, these are the things that I can expect coming out from the car. But when, when I see on the phone, right, I see, okay, what, uh, what are Snapdragon la, Qualcomm la. I said, what is this? I don't, it doesn't ring a bell in me, you know. Sometimes when I review cars, right, sometimes I also ask myself this. Put myself in the position of somebody who looks at cars. The way I look at phones, at least, you know, it's a review that speaks to the common people, right? Yeah.
when I switched to pro mileage, in my case, I got 46-47% of savings oh, for that time. Pro mileage was the only one that gave me 5,000 extra value to cover, yet still cheaper, a lot less. A lot Turn less. up! <laughs> So got a bit of a interesting development where my phone is concerned. Uh, so I use this feature called Find My Mobile, and I managed to trace the whereabouts of the phone, and it shows me that somebody who picked it up has already put in a new SIM card on the phone. But Turn right. because I'm still the registered owner of the phone, I was therefore able to lock the phone out, and and I was looking at the location on the map. It looks like meters. it is in, uh, on SS five in the field, all right? Uh, probably abandoned. So I am going to try my luck and uh, and see whether maybe the flirt like fuck that phone and decide to just throw it. So uh, wish me luck, guys. Left on Jalan SS. So earlier in the day, I was driving the Tiguan 1.4. Now I am taking the two-liter model on route to to see if I can locate the phone. The 1.4 gives 150 horsepower, this one gives 220 horsepower. However you feel it, there is a significant difference. Of, and also you get two extra driven wheels. This is all-wheel drive, the 1.4 is two-wheel drive. But you see right in this situation, there is it would have made next to no difference whether I had taken the 1.4 or the two liter model. Now, of course, I'm sure if you are a regular long distance uh, driver, right, you always do KL Penang, you always do KL JB, uh, KL Kuantan, the two liter here makes a bit more sense because I always say when it comes to driving long distances, right, a bigger capacity engine always has the advantage, turbocharged or not. The advantage, the difference is there. Here, right now, as I am negotiating town traffic all right where you can't even hit triple digit speeds the only real difference i can tell you between this and the 1.4 is that the takeoff from standstill or rolling acceleration there is less lag slightly less lag if you are just buying your tiguan all space for your day-to-day -day urban grind in all honesty, the 1.4 is actually good enough. Cukup makan, boleh pakai. Okay, it's been a long time really since I was last at the toll booth. I really hope there is enough balance in my touch and go. Now I'm somewhere in Kepong. Alright, I tracked the phone somewhere in Kepong. That's this last detected, last pinged location. So, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to find a place, an appropriate place to, to park my car. Right? And, uh, and get, and get down and hunt for the thing on foot. So the phone has moved again. So I got an update from my missus back home who's monitoring my search uh, on the computer. Uh, she has pointed me to an entirely, entirely different location such location so uh so i'm heading there apparently now the, right the, end of the road so the CR on keep so apparently now the uh the phone is in a in a shop and i well the phone my spare phone here is is uh, what you call it uh, is running on low batteries so but hey the it, it, quite luckily, I brought the uh, the two liter model, and this one has a built-in GPS that you know that allows me to uh, key in the address and bring me straight there to the road. Because uh, 
I can find my way myself but because I, want, I don't want to like you know distract my mind thinking of navigating right? I want to be brought there you know guided there and uh, But the Please sad thing is, right at the end of the road this the this R car, all right, does not have the traditional USB port. It has the uh, USB-C port, which, well, it's I believe it's the next generation thing. I remember seeing this first in the A class, all right, the Mercedes A class, and now everybody else is uh, is phasing out the old school USB ports and just putting USB-C. Port, uh, ports in their car. The future, they say, is USB-C to USB-C. Now uh, turn right and then turn left. You know, cables. So there, right there, is is where it's uh, where my phone potentially is. Okay, this is going to be my last last hurrah because my phone. My spare phone here, battery is dead. Uh, I can't do anything from here. So the last I saw was that uh, it's along this road, okay, um, at shop lot number 11, just mere minutes ago. Okay, so shop lot number 11. Okay, I'm seeing shop lot number 16. Uh, let me see. Uh, what we have here 11 next to it is a clinic a guy is a clinic group of people queuing up for covid screening tests ah. okay ah, well <sighs> well if he's having to take a covid test then fuck it can keep the phone okay no luck so I guess it will be phone shopping for me Heading home now I've used the remote to find my mobile system to lock the phone out So and uh, I've also tried to erase all the data in the phone remotely So hopefully the phone now is useless to whoever is that's holding it I think I've exhausted all, my, all the energy that I could spend on that phone already So it's, I guess it's just time to move on Thanks guys, this has been a most interesting experience, I must say. So, learn some interesting lessons along the way. One of the most important ones is this. If you lose a Samsung phone or if you lose an Android phone, there are ways to track the whereabouts of your phone. If you act quickly enough, there is a good chance you can retrieve it. So, my mistake was I went the manual route of searching the phone too quickly and lost precious time in tracking it because you see uh, based on my analysis of the phone's movement logs right i dropped the phone at about uh, 10 pm and for a whole hour the phone was still active it was picked up i think much earlier than that but you know for a whole hour the phone was still active and it could be tracked now if i had upon realizing I lost my phone straight away logged into my computer rather than trying to backtrack my steps I would have tracked the phone's whereabouts more quickly and more effectively but I was also operating on the assumption that because the phone was sitting on on the roof of my car it could not have went very far I was just searching around the vicinity and that really lost me precious time so guys if you have happened to lose your Samsung phone firstly you can use the find my mobile function at Samsung you can also search on Google and say you know how to find your missing Android phone and assuming if you enable location detection Android either Android or Samsung will be able to help you track the whereabouts of your phone and give you a path way, way to follow the phone I, I probably missed the window opportunity to retrieve the phone but no matter I guess my next update on this subject will be on what phone that I will be buying next Guys, so some rather interesting developments with regards to my phone. I got a call 
from the person holding my phone. He has offered to return it to me. Uh, basically, I do not know whether what his intentions are. It could be a kind-hearted gesture. It could be um, an attempt to lure me into an ambush. I don't know. I'm not speculating. But um, what I've said up front is, can I offer you a reward? And the story that he told me was that his phone is stuck in the shop. The shop's charging him 350 ringgit for repairs. So I said, okay, fine. I will pay for the fixing of your phone. You return mine to me. That's it. Done. The thing is that I actually managed to track the phone to the whereabouts. Yesterday, I actually got pretty close, but I just couldn't narrow the location. So now I'm heading back there again. This time, I'm going to meet the guy. I'm going to avoid coming down from the car for, for many and for obvious reasons. But I am sincere in tabling a reward to him. So if he returns the phone to me, then I will honour my offer of, uh, of the reward to him. And uh, I wouldn't even show his face in the video, you know, out of, to, out of respect of his privacy. Alright, so I am nearing the location, but before I call him, I think I have found a safe enough spot that I want to stop and, uh, and make the transaction. What I'm going to do is, this is the money, and uh, I'm going to drop the rear window a bit. Okay, so the money is here, hanging at the hanging at the window like that okay so he's going to be able to take it from the plastic bag then what I will do is I'm going to inspect the phone I'm going to ask him to drop it through the window and he can take the money from there right Here goes nothing, guys. hey buddy I'm in the blue car outside the building can you come out yeah it's a blue car with the with the signal lights on uh, what what are you what 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 color t-shirt are you wearing ah? Yes, 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 where are you are you coming from? Uh, where where okay, okay, all right, I see you I see you Can you just show me the phone? Can you just show me? Have you taken out the SIM card? Uh, you take, can you take out the SIM card first? feelings to him okay okay can you just throw it inside the money is there here's the money here 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 all right okay can you just throw the phone inside first uh, if you want to give me money you give me i'm too big for this type of rubbish why are you saying this am i the one that called you no am i the one that called you okay okay can you am i stupid that calling you no bro my money is there already okay my money is there already Okay, thank you. Bro, bro. Come on, get away. Why is you treating me like this? I, I, I called you. you no, called bro, bro, you. listen. I called you. I treated me like a sip of a smoke. Why is you treating me like that? No, bro, nothing. Don't do that, my friend. Get away with your money. Well. Am I stupid? Am I stupid? I call you. Am I stupid? Bro. Am I stupid? I call you. Bro, it's nothing personal. My offer is still is still there. Do you want to. Excuse me, calm down. Calm down. No, no, no. I'm not coming down. I'm sorry. But. Can I offer you still the reward? I'm sincere in offering you the reward. Excuse me. Am I stupid that I called you? No, no, no. I'm not saying anything. No, this is your phone, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is your SIM card, right? Okay, this is your memory card. Yes, yes, yes. This is your memory card. Yeah, yes, yes. 
This is your card and your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, all right. So everything is complete. All right. Can I offer you the money to fix your phone? You know what? What? Uh, if you have respect, okay. If you have respect and regard for for, for people. Yeah. You should behave like a human being. You are treating me like a coward. I am not one. No, bro. Nothing. You say because I need money. I tell you because I need money for my phone. No, no. If I want this one, I break it and down, and nothing will happen. You understand? Bro. If you want to give me, you give me money like this. Don't treat me like this. I'm a coward. Give the money and give it to me. Yeah, be, 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 wise, be nice. Take care, buddy. Have a good day. Well, he's an emotional man. See, the thing is that why, why did I not want to come down from the car? It's very simple. It's fucking COVID season for fuck's sake. Why do I, I do not want, I do not know what's this history of this guy. So, um, in fact, I'm not even touching the phone until I go home and sanitize it. But, well, <laughs> well, got the phone back. But all the same, to be safe, I'm going to have the thing reset and uh, close this rather bizarre chapter. So, I, I, first thing is that I, I don't understand why he's so mad. Why, uh? That one, that one, I, I don't, I don't get. It's very normal one, ma, to want to insist to check the phone, right? Just now, at that point in time, I could easily have driven away with the money and be done. But seeing that I made the offer, I like to think that I'm a man of my word. That's so bizarre, man. I give money to people, alright, to buy back my own barang. And I'm gonna fuck. <sighs> Artificial Intelligence Skin